listening to the North Peace MB Church Roundtable Podcast. For more information, visit npmbchurch.com. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the North Peace Roundtable Podcast. Uh, my name is Andrew, and with me as always is Corland. Hello, hello. With a new look. Oh, yeah. I don't know if you can see the cam- Well, we should zoom the camera in on all those whiskers, <laughs> that lovely mustache. And Cameron's here. Good morning. And you should try and grow a mustache. <laughs> We've talked about that. We've talked about that, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's not going to work. <laughs> it's not in, not in the cards. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, if you are uh, tuning in for the first time, thanks for either listening or watching. Uh, Every week we try and record an episode that talks about uh, a different aspect of uh, theology or the Bible or uh, Christian living, and then kind of we we unpack it. So last week, I I was expecting a lot more hate mail, um, but we got none. So anyways, last week we talked uh, about the divinity and humanity of Jesus and how uh, lots of people kind of get that wrong or twist that to try and push an agenda and what it actually means that Jesus is fully God and fully man. And uh, so I would encourage you to go back and listen to that episode if you haven't yet. And today we are talking about another super interesting topic um, that I think also has a lot of like confusion or maybe just total misunderstanding of what it means. So we want to talk about, uh, I guess the question is, can can a Christian lose their salvation? Like, is it possible for you to, you know, be a Christian, but then because of, and we'll get into it, whatever, X, Y, Z, things that you do, can you actually like fall away and lose the salvation that you had? And then connected to that, we want to just kind of ask, well, what is the unforgivable sin, right? Because mm-hmm. I think... Um, uh, I I grew up, and we'll get into it in a bit later. But I grew up with this idea that like Christians could, you know, almost accidentally commit this unforgivable sin that Matthew twelve talks about, and then you're you're out forever. Like it's unforgivable. So let's start then. Like uh, I'll just throw that question out. I wrote down a bunch of scripture and some of my thoughts. But can a Christian lose their salvation? Is that actually possible? We, we both, we both <laughs> look at camera. Well, <laughs> well, it's. Um, I was reading through Hebrews and and <clears throat> then just thinking about some folks in my own life who follow Jesus and would now say that they're not, hmm. and and, would, and actually adamantly have turned from following Jesus. My first thought in that scenario was, well, you never really knew him. Mm-hmm. But then I was challenged in that too, because I, I remember and I recall like th- these engagements and these times <clears throat> where these folks were very much following Jesus. And so then I, it, was, it puzzled me. And um, in Hebrews chapter six, it talks uh, verse four to eight that, um, for it is impossible in the case of those who have once been enlightened, who have tasted the heavenly gift, who have shared in the Holy Spirit, and have tasted the goodness of the word of God and the powers of the age to come, and then have fallen away to restore them again to repentance, since they are crucifying once again the Son of God for their own harm and holding him up to contempt. And when I read that, I'm like, well, I see, I've see, i seen a couple of people do that. So I don't know at what point, hmm. honestly, if, if you've <coughs> experienced salvation, but then you work over the next... 10 years to push God away and then deny and then not follow. I don't know. I, you know, it's difficult to wrap your mind around God's mercy and what that looks like through brokenness and through his just, you know, unexplainable mercy. But I might land on, yeah, you might be able to reject God enough that it's Hmm. not like you are losing anything. It's like you're forfeiting it. Hmm. And so I think that, yeah, I think that I would land on that point that you could actually reject it, but it's not like you'd ever lose it in that point, hmm. if that makes sense. So it's almost like you've been redeemed and, and God is holding you in his hand and you can actually over time say, like, I don't want this gift. I don't, I reject it. I, I'm choosing to to accept the faith that I so easily read about for rejecting God. Hmm. Yeah, and really this debate, um, there's there's two sides to it, and it's the whole, you know, Calvinist 
Arminian debate, I would say if you want to generalize it, right? And the Calvinist side would, would have a doctrine called the perseverance of the saints, meaning that those whom God saves, um, he will help them persevere to the end. And then the Arminian side would be, no, you can actually, <clears throat> uh, I forget what the, because, you know, Calvin has that, they have their little tulip with the little things. I forget what the Arminian side is. It's probably another flower or something. <laughs> Rhododendron. <laughs> but their, their, um, their idea is, no, you can, you can actually lose your salvation. Um, you can have it for a while and then walk away and lose it. I'm going to turn my, like, bring, bring off. I don't know if you can hear that on the recording. It's my wife saying good morning. Anyways, Aww. so um, I agree that there's some... Um, there's there's verses that that you could use to support both, but I think um, where I would land is um, that no, I don't think someone who has genuinely experienced salvation and um, understands the gospel um, that I don't I don't think that you would be able to fall away. Uh, and I'll, I'll read a couple of verses, um, but then I'll, I'll clarify that because I agree from experience. I have people in my own family that I go, well, it kind of seems like that's exactly what happened. Mm. But in, in John 8, there's a few times when even Jesus himself says stuff like this. Um, so Jesus said to the Jews who had believed him, if you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples and you will know the truth and the truth Oh, sorry. I totally am reading the wrong one. <laughs> John 6, <laughs> 38 to 40, not John 8. Uh, Jesus says, For I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I should lose nothing of all that he's given me, but raise it up on the last day. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who looks on the Son and believes in him should have eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. So Jesus says, I'm not going to lose anything that that God has given me. And then even if you read in John uh, 10, uh, Jesus says, uh, uh, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they will never perish and no one will snatch them out of my hand. My father who has given them to me is greater than all and no one is able to snatch them out of my father's hand. I and the father are one. So, <clears throat> There's two examples where, where Jesus is like, okay, God's given me my sheep and no one can actually, you know, pull them mm. out of my hand. And then I'll just read two more because I think, it, you know, Ephesians uh, chapter one talks about the, the spirit, the Holy Spirit given to us as a seal. And it says, in him, you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation and believed in him were sealed with the promise Holy Spirit who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it to the praise of his glory. So there's this seal given to us who the Holy Spirit is the guarantee of our mm -hmm. salvation. And then the last one I'll read is Philippians 1, 6. And I'm sure of, his, sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. So I, re I read verses like that and I go, well, man, it kind of sounds like right? That Jesus says, I'm the one who's going to give you salvation and no one is going to be able to snatch that away from you. <clears throat> I don't know. Colin, do you want to jump in? Any? Yeah, I, I would have to agree with Andrew on this. I think that you, if you truly have been saved and there's evidence of that in your life, then no, you cannot lose your salvation. If it's, I think even, even, uh, I don't remember exactly where it is, but the Bible talks about people saying like on, on the day of judgment, like Lord, Lord. Yeah. Like Matthew the, seven. Yeah. Essentially saying like, God, I know you. And God's like, no, nah, I never knew you. Right. Mm -hmm. So like, I think that there's people that can try and, or, or would, would say they know God, but they don't actually know God and haven't actually accepted hmm. Christ. So punishment. then everyone that fell away was never saved to begin with. That would be more so where I would land. Yeah. And it's tough because it, it would be drawing a black and white on that subject, which sure. I think when it comes to salvation, there needs to be because you can't be kind of saved. You can't be like you can't sit on the fence of salvation. You're either saved or you're not. 
I can think of people though that like I I watched um, living a Christian life and then are now mm-hmm. following another religion. Same. Same. Like full out not Christian religion. <clears throat> It would be interesting. Like, I, I don't know how to unpack that in my mind. So you can see this. And, and so I think that where, where we land is, were they ever saved? Mm-hmm. But I think you mentioned you have people in your network where you, you'd once watched them follow Jesus and now yeah. they're following another world religion. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> but but the, so even like the, the passage that you were thinking of, Coraline, is, is um, Matthew 7, when he says, not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who's in heaven. And on that, on that day, many will say to me, Lord, didn't we prophesy in your name, cast mm-hmm. out demons in your name, do mighty works in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you, which I, I always found that super interesting that mm-hmm. it, Jesus doesn't say like, yeah, I used to know you. He says like, I, don't, I never knew you. And mm-hmm. they're, they're going, but we did all these like amazing things in your name. And there was this, there's, there seems to be this, this disconnect, but so here's where I, yeah, here's where my wrestle is. I think scripturally, there's a fairly strong case that someone who has really experienced the gospel and Mm -hmm. understood it would not be able to lose their salvation. But like you mentioned, like, so I have an uncle who for, I'm just going to ballpark like 20 years, uh, faithful Christian went to church was an elder in the church that he was a part of. And then it was probably, uh, Oh, maybe even more than that. I was going to say five years, maybe even like eight or nine, maybe coming up on a decade, 10 years ago, he renounced Christianity said that Jesus wasn't real and he's practicing Judaism. Now Jesus is not the Messiah. Salvation is not through Jesus. And so that's, <clears throat> so I'm, I'm wrestling with this cause I go, okay, biblically, no one can snatch, no one can snatch them out of my hand. Jesus gives them salvation. I will keep them until the end. The, the Holy spirit is a guarantee of your salvation. But, but then I have this very real example where I go, so was, was, was those early years, was he, was my uncle like not really saved and just kind of going through the motions? Maybe, um, because I would, you know, if you say, well, yeah, if someone falls away, well, they never really understood the gospel. Well, yeah, it's possible that you could kind yeah. of, you could kind of <clears throat> fool, fool yourself into I, thinking I that you I would say so, and believed. especially fool others too. Because like, I, sure. I, we just went through sharing testimonies with the youth and <clears throat> almost every single one of us admitted to a point in our life where, well, we were the classic good kid Christian that did everything we were supposed to because we were supposed to. But then we hit a certain point in our life and we completely walked away from it. Or if we didn't completely walk away, we were essentially just trying to hold on to this act because we didn't want other people to know that we didn't have it all together. Mm. And then we hit this point where we had to actually decide like, it. well, am I following Jesus or not? Right? Like there was, there was a time in our life where we had to actually, I would say, decide whether or not we wanted the gospel to right. be a part of our life. Well, that would conflict though, because like when I think of my kid and like your children <clears throat> who have made this declaration to follow, truly believing mm-hmm. that would set them apart for the rest of their life, despite how they lived, mm. despite they could actually grow up and never and always reject Christ. But under like if we, yeah, so here's, so yeah, here's the balance too, I think, because some Christians take the assurance of salvation, like exactly what you just said. Sweet. Like Ruby, two, my daughter, two weeks ago said the prayer. Boom. She can't lose her salvation. And truly there's, believes it. There's the ticket to heaven. So there's, there's this tension that I go, <clears throat> I think that's swinging. And maybe, maybe this is one of those things where you land in the middle. Because I think that's swinging way too far. And I've been to funerals where you look at a guy that I'm like, man, his lifestyle does not does not reflect i can't judge his heart but i can judge the last 30 Yeesh. years yeah. of awful, and yet yeah. the pastor goes hey at vbs when he was five you know we know that he's with jesus now and i just go Yeesh. i i think that is a a misunderstanding of once saved always saved you said the prayer you're good for life right. but then i think you can swing way farther the other way where like um you know out in the old colony out in Presbyto. You have, even if you are following Jesus, you have zero assurance of salvation. Ugh, hopefully, hopefully you're in mm-hmm. because you can never know if you're actually in or not. I think both of those 
ideas are wrong, right? Because yeah, like if you, if you said a prayer and then you have zero evidence of life transformation and the fruit of the spirit, I would say like, then you, you did not actually understand the gospel you were just trying to get out of hell so i'm just going to say a prayer and like hopefully i so it's interesting with our kids fingers. too right yeah it <clears throat> drifts into the whole catholic baptism at birth and so we we <laughs> we, we train and we can i was going to say condition we we teach our children and then they make this profession and it's beautiful but it can't stop there because it is not an assurance because just like anything else like there is i don't know it's that's a beautiful foundation, but you're right. They have to come to a, you know, it's like you said before. Your parent, you're not saved by your parents or by yeah, your yeah. grandma. Um, although your grandma might have drug you to church and you said the prayer and then she job yeah. done, good to go. And I, I wouldn't want to swing as far as to say that like once you've been saved, you'd never struggle with sin in your life because I think that that's. Ignorant to say, because yeah, totally. if you look at any one of us, I'm sure we can admit to lots of sin that we still struggle with, right? Even if we look back into the Old Testament, the Israelites were God's chosen people, chosen by God, mm -hmm. set apart, and yet they still worship different idols. Like God would bring them out of, or brought them out of Egypt, and within X amount of time, they'd made a golden calf and started worshiping it, right? Yeah. Like they they sinned in major ways not just like oh oops i stubbed my toe and swore like it, they would say classified worldly big sins yeah. um and so i think that it'd be foolish to say that if you've been saved you can expect not to sin and that will show that you're not a, or that you're a true christian cuz that's just not what we see in the bible mm -hmm. at all yeah so i think there's this balance where you you can't ignore those you know four or five passages where where Jesus and Paul say like God's going to bring this act of salvation to completion. No one can snatch you out of Jesus's hands. And yet I, I think maybe part of the problem is in North America for, you know, 40 years or whatever. Salvation was just exactly that. Like sign the card, raise your hand, right. boom, you're in where I having kids has changed my view of salvation and all I'll, I'll, <laughs> I, I'll, uh, let me clarify before you're like, what salvation obviously is through faith alone in Christ alone, obviously. Mm -hmm. But I see my, my kids, my five-year-old and my seven-year-old make professions of faith in Jesus. And I go, do they fully understand penal substitutionary atonement? And that, you know, that imputed righteousness? No, mm -hmm. but it's this childlike faith where they go, I believe in Jesus and I think that there's something really beautiful about that. Mm -hmm. But I've seen more and more that I don't want to say salvation is like a process, but kind of, because I think there is, there comes a moment where you surrender, but I go, you know, Ruby's faith, for instance, she's five. She, does she fully under, no, there's this childlike faith where it's kind of like, I believe I want to follow Jesus. Mm -hmm. I remember making the same thing. And yet I would say, you know, probably in my teen years, I started really understanding yeah, mm -hmm. what Jesus did for me. Now, was I not saved? I have no idea, right? Mm -hmm. I think it was this, this process where I'm confessing that Jesus is Lord, um, I'm trusting in him, and yet it's like what, what the New Testament talks about, that we would grow in the knowledge and the wisdom of who God is and what. So I, I think we've, in North America, we've made salvation this like, boom, prayer you're in. Mm -hmm. Hey, you can never lose it now. And it's like, well, I, I still think that those who, who grasp the gospel and what Jesus has done, I think God will help them persevere to the end. And yet I, mm -hmm. I'm, I'll throw a wrench in here because then there's a, a few passage passages that they're almost like warning passages that throw an if in there. Yeah. Like if you, you persevere, it's kind of like, Oh, is it on me? Like Colossians one 22, <clears throat> Um, he's reconciled us in his body of flesh by his death in order to present you holy and blameless and above reproach before him. And then verse 23 says, if indeed you continue in the faith, it's like, well, wait, so God's going to present me holy and blameless if I continue. And I go, well, wait, so like, Ken, is it on me now? Mm -hmm. And then <clears throat> even um, in Hebrews 3, it says kind of a similar thing. Sin, um, what, what, I'm, man, I'm reading all the wrong passages today. 
Uh, For we have come to share in Christ, if indeed we hold our original confidence firm to the end. So there's another if. Even in uh, Matthew 10, there's another one where Jesus says, um, Matthew 10, 22, he says, uh, you will be hated by all for my name's sake, namesake, but the one who endures to the end will be saved. So there seems to be this like clause. If you endure to the end, right. you'll be saved. So I think we kind of hold this thing in tension where <clears throat> will God um, keep his saints to the end? Yep. But do I play a part in like persevering to the end? Yeah. So I think there's this kind of the assurance of salvation is not that we go, woohoo, I'm in forever. I can do whatever I want. Well, Jesus would be like, well, I never knew you. Like you, hmm. my disciples don't do stuff. It like would be that. a misunderstanding at that point in which case. But then also I think it's a misunderstanding to go. We can have no assurance of salvation. I have no idea if I'm in or not mm-hmm. because of these if passages. No, <clears throat> I think Jesus keeps those he saves in his hand. And yet there's this partnership where, over and over in the New Testament, we're called, but you got to persevere. Don't, don't phone it in. Like, don't just go, mm-hmm. yeah, I'm in, I'm good to go. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I don't, I still don't think you can lose your salvation, but there's all these passages where it's kind of like you walk this middle road of, and yet you want, you need to persevere. And those who persevere, God's with them, um, causing them to, to persevere to the end, right? Mm-hmm. It's not just left up to me where I go. Because if it was left up to me, man, I'd be out a long time ago. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so where do you land on like, um, so you have, okay, so take myself for example. What if you just never kind of <laughs> grow? Like mm-hmm. what if they're just you just live doing enough? You're a, you're a decent person. You love, you're like you're serving, like you, you're, working through your stuff but and then you're held to like you know um you know the great person in the faith and so you both arrive Hmm. on judgment day and and so you're both in do you think there's a varying degree like what does that look like is it Hmm. could could it be a life well lived and then you know a life pretty good you know and then you Hmm. both arrive there and is glory the same like what is that i don't i've never really spent much time thinking that's a good question i not maybe this is too blunt, but I think that's an entirely different conversation because you even stated in that you're both in, that would be your se- proof of your salvation. If you're both there, if you've both, both made it, you've been saved. So, so on this specific topic, I would say that good dodge. Well, but <laughs> you said it. <laughs> sure. Um, yeah. I think that it's a different conversation. Not that it's not one we can't touch on. Mm-hmm. Um, Cause I think that, God does say, or the Bible does say that and teach that we will be rewarded for the works that we do. Yeah. Um, So So it's like basement suite in the mansion versus uh, penthouse. Yeah, you got the leaky faucet. He doesn't. (laughs) That's right. (laughs) A thousand Um, square feet. Are you kidding me? (laughs) Yeah. No, I I would agree. Rear entry with half a sidewalk. Yeah. (laughs) No, I think there are, um, because the New Testament does talk about rewards right and we don't why would you why would you stack up rewards here on earth like you work work right and we're so afraid of the word like work (gasps) don't do any work well it's not for your salvation but the bible talks about uh you you work for the reward that's in heaven Mm -hmm. right and ultimately the ultimate reward is like we get to see jesus face to face so i don't think you know we joke but i really don't think i'd be like oh man Right. Cam got that and I only got this like the all of that will fade in comparison to like wow yeah. I get to look Jesus in the face but there is there's talks about reward um, there's even talks about different levels of punishment in hell so people go really the guy that is a decent person he gets the same punishment as Hitler no the Bible never says that there's right. there's different levels of punishment maybe that's a, another interesting podcast mm-hmm. right because Jesus even says it's going to be more bearable on the day of judgment for Sodom and Gomorrah than you guys and you go, well, wait, right. is there a different level of punishment? I think so. So someone that kills 6 million Jews is going to be punished differently? Probably. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. So <clears throat> just like there's different levels of reward in heaven. So that would actually be, I think that would be a really interesting mm-hmm. podcast. But so I, I think, um, anyways, just going back to the, the salvation, um, 
I think that, that you have to kind of have a, a bit of tension. Like I, I think as Christians, you can have assurance of salvation mm-hmm. to not wake up every day going like, man, I hope I'm in because always there's a level of like works righteousness tacked onto that. Like, I hope I've done enough. And it's interesting. I've had actual many conversations with usually elderly people near the end of their lives that ask me that, like, do you, do you think I've done enough? And I have to remind them like salvation is not based on anything that you do. Mm-hmm. Like I could have given more to missionary work. Sure. You could have, but that doesn't save you. Right. Um, and yet James talks about the works that we do are supposed to be evidence of the salvation that we mm-hmm. have. So, and I've said it before in sermons, if you live, if you said a prayer when you were 10 years old and you're 50 now and nothing in your life has changed like you're not any more like Jesus. There's no fruit in this of the spirit in your life. I really don't think that you could say, yeah, I'm a Christian mm-hmm. because there's no evidence. Right. And again, oh, you can't, you can't judge the heart. That's very true. But the Bible gives us all sorts of like barometers to go, okay, you know, there has to be some type of sanctification to, for lack of a better term, like prove mm-hmm. that you're saved. Do you know what I mean? So I, I think you don't want to just say assurance of salvation, once saved, always saved, boom, said the prayer, they're in. And yet you don't want to say you can have no, hopefully you've done enough. You, you never know if you're in or not. I think you kind of land in this. No, you can have assurance of salvation. And a proof of that is a life that um, exemplifies that. And then pe- there are moments when Christians wander away. Corland is a perfect example of that. We all are perfect examples of that, but yours is freshest. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Where you have a Christian that says, I'm walking away, right? And and yet God drew you back. So mm-hmm. I would say that's evidence that you are saved. Like you can't, you tried to get away from God yeah. and God said, no, I'm not letting you out of my hand, right? Yeah. And then, you know, I think of a guy like my uncle who for 10 years have has denied Jesus. Will God one day, maybe we can pray for that, that he's actually saved and he's just wandering. But if the day comes and uh, he never professes Jesus, was he ever actually saved? I don't know. And I think that that's where it's really, really important. Like, like what you've touched on, we can't judge the heart. It's incredibly important that we as Christians don't tell people if they're Christian or not, because it's not up to us if they're saved. It's up to Jesus. Their salvation is between Jesus and them. Is there evidence of that? Sure. Can we encourage them of what we've seen God do in their life? Yes. Hmm. But we can't actually tell them if they're saved or not. So to uh, it, this topic can be one that I think can almost hurt feelings, right? Because I too know people that were very close to me that have now what we would say walked away from God. Um, and so there's this, well, was he saved? What, well, it's not up to us to know if he was or not. Mm-hmm. If they're acting as unbelievers and they're denying God, like we can tell them about Jesus. We can continue to remind them of that in hopes that they will be reminded of the gospel and turn back. If they truly were saved, yeah. it would be like any other process where God sent prophets, not saying that we're prophets, but... <laughs> Where he sent prophets <laughs> to the nation of Israel to be like, guys, look at what you're doing. Like, turn back. Yeah. And if they weren't Christians, well, then telling them about the gospel is where we should be starting anyways. Yeah. Right? So. Yeah. And I think biblically speaking, there are, there, there are people who come to church, sit in the pews, would think that they're saved and are not. Because even First John 2 talks about this, saying, children, it's the last hour. And as you have heard, that Antichrist is coming. Ooh, oh, boy. I think it's Trump, right? <laughs> so now <laughs> oh, yeah. So now many antichrists have come. Therefore, we know that, it, that it's the last hour. And this is what he says, verse eight, 19. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of mm-hmm. us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that it might, be com- might become mm-hmm. plain that they are all, or they all are not of us. But you've been anointed by the Holy One, and you all have knowledge. So John says they, there were some that went out from them, that were actually never of them because if they had been, they would have continued with us. So I think there's just, it's just true. And this is like, even I think pastorally, this is terrifying sometimes thinking like that there's people who like Matthew seven can be fooling themselves going, yeah, I'm totally in. Right. Mm -hmm. And Jesus would say, 
man, you're you're doing all the right things, right? You're checking the boxes. Maybe you cast out a demon. Maybe you did a, an amazing thing. Maybe Your tassels you, are nice and long. Man, <laughs> <laughs> you should probably clarify what that means. Go for it. I'll let you do it so I don't butcher it. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, it's a Jewish thing. Anyways, <laughs> <laughs> the Pharisees would wear tassels. Um, <clears throat> but then... Jesus says, but I, I actually don't, I don't even know you. Right. And I, mm. and I, I, I remember I preached once about assurance of salvation and someone came up to me afterwards and says, I have a friend that came to all the youth conferences with me and, and made a profession of faith and had like an amazing encounter with the Holy spirit, but now they don't follow Jesus. So they've lost their salvation. And I said, listen, I've, I've been to secular concerts where people have amazing experiences. That doesn't mean it was the Holy spirit. And that kind of made that person quite mad, but Mm -hmm. like just an emotional high doesn't necessarily mean that I'm saved. Well, no, Uh, like I remember I went to a Foo Fighters concert. Um, Sorry. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) But I I looked around and I I wish I'd taken a video. There were people with their hands raised, eyes closed. They were worshiping. And I go, it's the exact same thing, right? It's this emotional reaction to music. And it's either you're at a, a Hillsong concert or Foo Fighters. And I looked around, I'm like, people are behaving exactly the same besides the drunkenness and all that kind of stuff that goes on at, at Foo Drunk, Fighters. Drunk in the spirit. Drunk right? in the spirit, bro. Same thing. So I, I just kind Perfect. of cautioned them. You can't base like, I had an amazing experience. I'm obviously saved. Right. Yeah. Not necessarily, right? So... I don't know if we've actually even answered the question, <laughs> but it's a good wrestling. Um, I well, it's a it's a it's a hard wrestle because you have <clears throat> to you have to land on, and it's hard to be black and white. But you have to land on every single person you know. They're either wandering, uh, or they were never saved. Hmm. And so that's that's just an it's difficult to navigate yeah. because you do have these ifs and you do have these this um, it's not a workspace but the evidence of salvation is a, a repentant life and mm-hmm. a life of um, striving for holiness as we talked we touched on a, a number of weeks ago and so then and I'm really just trying to put faces in my mind of of you know one recent where it was like i've i've seen that you mm-hmm. know i've seen that repentant living and then then mm-hmm. this just this rejection and so it could be this wandering time for this individual and i pray that this individual you know what that could look like i mean yeah it's just interesting to think about just yeah. because you yeah but uh, at the same time i've i've never questioned the mercy of god because i worked yeah. on the downtown east side with some really deeply sick people who just loved jesus but were mm-hmm. were were dying of heroin <laughs> overdose because they were deeply addicted and and struggling with mental health and mm-hmm. but some of the most you know I, I spoke at one Sunday at a church, um, the Anchor Church, right on East Cordova, and like half the people there were were, um, you know, in some form state of it, either addiction or just in, uh, intense poverty, but just worshiping God and like and reading and trying to engage and and like were continuous and like consistent over years mm. to this church, but mm-hmm. still struggling with addiction, and, and that really conflicts. With some of uh, at that time the church I was going to because it was like, well, where's that line, right? And, and then you arrive, you yeah, you arrive on Judgment Day and you struggled your whole life, and then there's a person who who didn't, and and that is just mm. an interesting. I think we'll be surprised when we get to heaven and we see we look around and and maybe we feel a little convicted at the way we tried to live our life, realizing that we were putting too much effort into mm-hmm. checking the boxes and not living mm. and engaging. Yeah, I, I, so I think some of the things we can land for sure is that if you're following Jesus, I think you can have complete assurance, Yeah, right? That you don't wake up going, man, I, I hope I'm still in, right? That's not what assurance of salvation means, or, or rather, sorry, opposite of that, that you just wake up going, man, I never really know if I'm in or not. Mm-hmm. But But also, I think it's not a say a prayer you're in for life it doesn't matter what you do right there's 
understanding the gospel <clears throat> is um, that there will be evidence um, that you you will grow in the fruit of the spirit, that you will be sanctified. Um, and then I even think of, uh, you know, Romans 8 talks about mm-hmm. um, uh, those whom he predestined, he also called, those whom he called, he also justified, and those whom he justified, he also glorified, and glorified is like the last stage, right? And so there's this promise that those who God calls, he will justify them and one day glorify them. And yet you ha- you have to live with a little bit of, of tension going, we all have examples of people that we go, yeah, I, I think they were following Jesus, and now they don't seem to be. Mm-hmm. Okay, it's not, you know, were they a, a Matthew 7 type of person where Jesus goes like, you I were, never knew you. I never knew you. Or are they wandering away and, and God, by his grace, is going to bring them back? Uh, we don't know. But I remember one guy said, <clears throat> you know, in the debate of, um, well, they were never really saved or, um, they're wandering and God will resave them. He said, so he said on both sides of the, of the debate, you can lose your salvation or you can't. He said, can we just agree that that person's lost and you should pray for them and share the gospel with them? Mm-hmm. And I said, yep. He, and I loved it. He said like, whether they have truly lost their salvation or they never had it, they're lost. So go share the gospel with them. Right. And I went, yeah. yep, that's a good, yep. Because he he landed like, I don't know. I don't know if they had it before or they never had it. I should probably go tell them about Jesus. I went, that's a good place to land. Yeah. <laughs> so you can never lose true salvation. And, and it reminds me of the podcast we did on sanctification and righteous living mm-hmm. right. a few weeks ago. So, um, yeah, that makes sense. So then the next question, and it's kind of related to that, is like this idea of this unforgivable sin. Because in Matthew 12, Jesus talks about this. And I think how I grew up was, yep, you become a Christian. You can't lose your salvation, except (laughs) if you like accidentally commit this unforgivable sin. And there's only one, right? There's one unforgivable sin. And if you do that, then it doesn't matter. Even if you come crawling back, you're not allowed back kind of thing. So in Matthew 12, uh, I won't read the whole thing, but Jesus heals a demon possessed man. And uh, people are going, you know, can this be the, the son of David? Is this the guy we've been waiting for? And verse 24 says, but when the Pharisees heard it, they said, it's only by Beelzebul, the prince of demons, that this man casts out demons. And then knowing their thoughts, Jesus, and I'll skip down, but Jesus kind of says, you know, how is that possible? Can a kingdom be divided against itself, right? Um, If by the spirit of God, I cast out demons then the kingdom of God um, has come upon you. How can someone enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he binds the strong man? And then at the very end, he says, therefore, I tell you, every sin and blasphemy will be forgiven people, but the blasphemy against the spirit will not be forgiven. Whoever speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven, but whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven, either in this age or in the age to come. And I remember it was like, ooh, right. man, tread lightly. Yeah. So yeah. Um, did you guys like hear a similar thing growing up, or like was it just yeah. not talked about? No, I heard it, and it was my brother. I feel like my brother and I had this joke where it's like, you can, you know, like when growing up, you were at school, like, you can, you can talk crap about me, but don't. T- I'm the only one that can talk crap about my brother, right? And I remember reading that as a kid. I'm like, oh, Jesus is like, you can call me down, but you're not going to call yeah. the Holy Spirit down. That's not. <laughs> yeah. And I remember playing with that. And like, huh. it's only it's I like can. the Holy Spirit's in the corner. <laughs> Thanks, big brother Jesus. Yeah, that's a weird view. <laughs> yeah. But pretty funny when you're reading it through that lens. But I do remember this. What does it mean? But it was never unpacked. It was just kind of glanced over. Again, yeah. Probably some traveling evangelist. Oops, see, mm. I, I actually don't remember ever hearing this till like probably only two or three years ago. Huh. And I remember the first time I heard it, I like borderline freaked out inside because going back through your mind. Like, well, uh. yeah, because there was actually a time where like I had started denouncing the Holy Spirit and, and Jesus and like just being like, yeah, I used to be a Christian, but like I don't really 
follow Jesus or believe in Jesus anymore. <laughs> I liked, so I was like, I liked your point. I used to be a Christian man. <laughs> well, that, that's because that was my attitude right. behind yeah. it, right? And yeah. I was just like, like, so when I first heard about the unforgivable sin, um, I was sitting there like a wreck. I was like, oh my goodness, did yeah. I accidentally do this? That like, yeah. and by accidentally, like I knew what I was saying. I made the choice to do that. So in reality, it wouldn't have been an accident. But after having come back to to God and, and repented of sin and stuff, there was a part of me that was like, wait, am I like faking it here? Am I not actually saved? Like, is there a, even a point to me being here? Um, so yeah, I, it's been a, a wrestle for me too, wrestling with that. And I don't know exactly where I land on it other than that. I think God has been gracious in my case and, and brought mm -hmm. me back. Um, I don't know that I'd say that I, committed the unforgivable sin per se by saying that I'm no longer a Christian. Um, yeah. But. So, so what do you think it is then? Because I'm not convinced that it's a one time thing where you go like, I reject the Holy spirit or whatever, like, and then mm -hmm. you're doomed. And I'll, uh, maybe I'll tell you why in a minute, but like, what, like, what, what do you think it is then? I've heard people say like, Oh, well, if you ever <laughs> like critique, something that the Holy Spirit did, uh, well, then you're blaspheming the Holy Spirit. So if someone said, like, you know, the Holy Spirit raised this guy from the dead, and if I went, like, uh, are you sure? People, oh, you didn't believe that it was the Holy Spirit. Blast lost me. your salvation. Yeah, and so I've heard people defend, like, signs and wonders and miracles, and if you don't believe it, then you're blaspheming yeah, the Holy that's, Spirit. that's garbage. Anyway. <laughs> but I've heard that. Sure. But that, that feeds into more so like doubt because sure. I, I have struggled with doubt <clears throat> and like, you know, I, I would be the first one to to see someone walk out of the hospital and I'd be the first one to say like, yeah, pretty miraculous. And also it's pretty miraculous that the doctors were able to diagnose and discover and like, that's pretty miraculous too, right? Mm -hmm. Am I blaspheming the, the miraculous no. work of the spirit? No, I don't think and so. I think it's first John even says that we're called to actually test the spirits and discern sure, and not yeah. just believe everything we see like <laughs> there's right. discernment so it's not blasphemy to go like are you sure your leg lengthened there like yeah. you know what i mean it like, wasn't just the angle or yeah anything? i feel like um again i feel it doesn't matter what i feel, I feel <laughs> facts don't care about your feelings cameron <laughs> but i mean how would how would like today blasphemy against the holy spirit look and I don't know, and, and and again, it would wrestle with falling away. But like, I feel the Holy Spirit through uh, conviction, through through wisdom, yeah. And I've seen, um, you know, and so maybe it would fall along, you know, a new someone who's being convicted of sin, someone who's discovering the faith in us, like, you know, yeah, causing some division or some doubt in that, like being intentional about leading someone astray. Or even navigating that in our own life. Like, what would it mean to not commit the unforgivable, but to walk away from God by, when I felt that conviction, I would actually just reject it or to, or mm -hmm. like, you know. Yeah, I don't, I don't think a Christian can actually commit the unforgivable sin. Right. Um, and I don't think it's a one-time thing. What I, because when you, he's saying this to the Pharisees, because the Pharisees end up where they say, this man is actually, they're essentially saying like, you're demon possessed, right? you're Satan, you're casting out demons by demons. So they're looking at the work of the spirit and they're saying, that's just demonic. But if you read through Matthew, you'll see the Pharisees like progress uh, where their hearts get harder and harder and harder and harder, where they finally can't even recognize the work of God. Right. So they go from, that they, they go from, saying like oh man jesus is just blaspheming you're not allowed to say stuff like that and questioning why do you eat with sinners they go from that to all of a sudden being like yeah you're not this is not even god you're just demonic mm -hmm. and then later on you'll see that then they began to make play, plans uh how to kill him so they go from like are you sure like jesus like are you should you be doing that why are you eating with sinners why are you doing that on the sabbath to you're demon possessed to let's murder him so you see a progression of um them hardening their hearts hardening their hearts hardening to their hearts to a point where it's like was paul where, ever in that group yeah i don't know where they right. go um where i think the unforgivable of sin is where you continually reject 
the the spirit in your life convicting you of sin or doing mm-hmm. that where you continually say nope 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 where it's almost like then god goes okay i'm going to give you what you want which is me not convicting you anymore and that's why it's unforgivable so would you say there is still like that breaking point though cuz like you mentioned that there's like a process of their hearts being hardened so would they have still been with air quotes here savable during that time but then it hits a certain point where Mm-hmm. They just do blaspheme the Holy Spirit and it's it's no longer a questioning or it's no longer a hardening of heart, but now it's just an outright. Well, I like the theory that you just presented, presented in, and I think I've heard it before where, yeah, it is. So the Holy Spirit has been sent to the world to convict people of sin. Mm-hmm. Christians and non-Christians alike, just convicting of sin. And so if that, if that is removed, then then it would, in, a, in, a, in an essence, be unforgivable because then there's not that. Yeah. stirring or that nudging anymore mm. it's almost like you've been given yeah. over to your own desires and here's what i think because even romans one talks about part of the wrath of god is him giving people what they want and just removing himself yep. so the wrath and it is says god absent. just hands them over because they they mm. continually reject him and god goes okay fine right it's for lack of it's like god just kind of removes his hand and says okay you want like i'm trying right. to you know what i mean and then even if you think about what hell is, we have this view of hell that, you know... Fire and brimstone well, is the worst part of it. Well, n- no, not <laughs> not that. But we have this view of hell of people being like, oh, please, God, let us into heaven. And he goes, bing, bing, no. And he's kicking them into hell. Everywhere you see, even in the book of Revelation, where God's wrath is falling on people, they are cursing God and they are even angrier at God. They're not going, we're sorry, God. Everyone, the picture of people in hell is people still mad at God in hell, not going, if only I had enough time, I would have surrendered. So it, it connects to this where mm-hmm. God give hell is God giving people what you don't want to be with me. Sure. Whoa, I, I'm getting fired up <laughs> in my mind that God goes, uh, who was it? It was C.S. Lewis. I think that it's, um, you know, uh, us saying to God, you know, your will be done. And hell is God saying to us, okay, your will be done. Like, this is what you want, right? right. Life without me. So I think the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit is where you have hardened your heart and continually rejected God that he finally goes, okay, I'm not going to convict you anymore. Mm -hmm. And that's a scary place to think about that, you know, God's convicting spirit is no longer going to convict you. Mm -hmm. And that's why Jesus says like, uh, you won't be forgiven in this age or in the age to come because you don't want it. Your heart is so hard that God's not going to convict you anymore. So I, on one hand, it's reassuring because I don't think it's like a one time, oh shoot, mm-hmm. I blasphemed the Holy Spirit. Now I'm out. So I, I remember like it was almost used as like a fear, like make sure you don't blaspheme. And it's like, what? So now I'm walking on eggshells going, oh man, I hope I don't slip up and accidentally. No, if you are a Christian and you're following Jesus, you can't commit. The, the yeah. Bl- and it's definitely not calling out. Um, false prophets and signs no. and wonders that are no. that, that are truly not um, of God in in a lot of ways. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So uh, <laughs> as we like stall out, uh, uh well. So uh, on one hand, I, the reason I think it connects right to the assurance of salvation is that if you are like following Jesus, you're in His Word. Um, there's a fruit of the spirit in your life. You have a desire to obey Jesus. I think you can be confident that like, man, I can't make one oopsie and now I'm out. Mm -hmm. No, you have assurance of salvation. And yet I think we need to pray for people who um, are, are wandering or who maybe were never saved and we'll never know. I don't think Um, we need to pray for them and share the gospel with them and plead with them that they wouldn't harden their hearts, right? So um, I think we can wake up every day, if you're following Jesus, with full assurance going, yeah, I know that I'm saved. I don't have to worry that, oh, shoot, did I do something wrong, that I'm out now? Mm -hmm. But again, don't fall into the complacency of like, assurance of salvation, I can do whatever I want, because that's that's the opposite, right? right? Because all of these passages, these ifs are, okay, if you have salvation persevere to the end right you will you will persevere if you keep striving they're, they're almost like cattle prods like 
reminding us to keep yeah. heading in the right direction. It's not like a, an ultimatum necessarily, but to the true believer, they can act as a cattle prod to keep you on the right track, to keep yeah. you walking in the direction that you need to be. Yeah, totally. Any other final thoughts? I think it's good. Well, maybe we'll do one on uh, rewards and punishments and heaven sure. and hell. I think that'd Levels be interesting. <laughs> There's like seven levels of heaven. What religion? Te- isn't that Mormonism? There's like different levels. Anyways. Yeah. So well, we can get into like the third heaven. and like, uh, Yeah. With, uh, yeah. Re- re- referenced. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, um, hopefully that's been helpful and reassuring to you. If you have struggled with that, like how do I know I'm saved? Am I actually saved? Can I, you know, commit a whoopsie and then I'm out? <laughs> right. <laughs> And then uh, hopefully it encourages you to pray for people and share the gospel with people who, you know, maybe have fallen away, whether they have ever been truly saved or not. We, it's not for us to decide, but mm-hmm. a good reminder to continue to share the gospel and pray for them. And yeah, hopefully it's just been helpful in clarifying some of some confusing passages. So thanks for listening and watching and make sure you subscribe. I think we have 97 subscribers on YouTube now. Ooh, Ooh we're getting close to the hundred. And uh, don't we get a plaque from YouTube if we get to a hundred? <laughs> no, I think it's a million. <laughs> oh, okay, man, shoot. We're so close. And uh, if you, if you have ideas for topics that you want covered, you can always message us or email us and uh, we will talk to you next week.